Hello, my name is Ken Burke, and I'm your elected clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller for Pinellas County. We have created a series of videos to assist you with completing the forms or packets that you will submit to either initiate your case or address issues that have arisen in a pending case. To ensure that your documents are processed quickly and efficiently, it is important that the documents are completed fully and properly. This short video will take you through the forms or packets, as well as answer some of the most frequently asked questions. At any time, please feel free to pause the video and take a moment to fill out the applicable section. Once you have completed the form or packet, please refer to our website or contact our office for instructions on how and where to submit these documents. Should you have any additional questions regarding a family law, small claims, or landlord-tenant case, affordable legal services are offered through the Clerk's Self-Help Center. Please visit our website at www.mypinellasclerk.org for additional information. Thank you. These packets should be used when you are asking the court for temporary or concurrent custody of a minor child or children by an extended family member who is a relative within the third degree, or certain step-parents, such as grandparents, sister, or uncle, who have had custody for at least 10 days in a 30-day period. See Florida Statute Chapter 751 for more information. While a clerk of court cannot provide legal advice, the Self-Help Center has attorneys on hand for a reduced rate to assist with any questions for parties representing themselves. Go to mypinellasclerk.org to find out more information on assistance for self-representation. First, let's go over the information that is required on pleadings filed. The header must include the location of your case by entering the Judicial Circuit and County. Pinellas County is located in the 6th Judicial Circuit. The case style states who is the petitioner and who is the respondent in a lawsuit. The person who originally asks for legal action is called the petitioner and remains the petitioner throughout the case. The person against whom the original legal action is being requested is called the respondent because he or she is expected to respond to the petition. Your case number is a unique number used to identify your case and is assigned in sequential order in the court it is filed in. This will be provided to you when you file your case. A case number may be referred to as a reference number, UCN number, or case number. Always remember to sign and date any filing where a signature is required. Some forms, such as affidavits, are notarized documents. Wait to sign these documents until you are in the presence of a notary or deputy clerk. Please bring photo ID with you. When you file a document with the court, you must also provide a copy for the other party. Be sure to put in the correct information of service on each form. If someone other than an attorney in good standing with the Florida Bar Association helped you fill out a form in this packet, enter their name and contact information on the forms that request it. Read all forms and complete the required fields. Please make sure to provide accurate information and print clearly. All questions need to be answered. This form must be used when anyone who is not a lawyer in good standing with the Florida Bar helps you complete any Florida Family Law form. Attorneys who are licensed to practice in other states but not Florida, or who have been disbarred or suspended from the practice of law in Florida, are non-lawyers for the purposes of the Florida Family Law forms and instructions. The non-lawyer must complete this form and must be signed by both you and the person assisting you before completing any family law form. Florida Rule of Judicial Administration 2.545 Section D requires the petitioner in a family law case to file with the court a notice of related cases, if any. A case is considered related if it involved the same parties, children, or issues and is still pending when the family law case is filed. A case can also be related if it affects the court's jurisdiction, or an order in the new case will affect an order on the same issues in a different case. Always read through the entire motion before filling in information in the fields provided. Check the box that applies to your case. If there are no related cases, check the appropriate box and proceed to sign and date the notice. If there are cases related to your action, list the case information in the provided fields. Check the box that corresponds with the related case type. If none of the options apply, use the other box to enter the case type. Check the box as to where your case was filed. Fill in the state where the case was filed if it was not in Florida. Fill in the name of the court and the last order or judgment filed in the case. For example, if your case is in Pinellas County, the name of the court would be the Sixth Circuit Court, Pinellas County, Florida. 
Next, check the boxes that apply to the relationship between the two cases. Include further detail of the relationship below. If you have more than one related case, list each one separately in the spaces provided. If you would like the related cases to be coordinated between the two courts, check the appropriate box and list the case number in the space provided. Check the box that best fits your situation. If you are unsure which one to check, you may need to consult with an attorney. Remember to sign and date the completed form. Next, you will fill out the Family Law Cover Sheet. This document is used for reporting judicial information pursuant to the Florida statutes. Place a check beside the proceeding you are initiating. If you are simultaneously filing more than one type of proceeding against the same opposing party, such as a modification and an enforcement proceeding, complete a separate cover sheet for each action being filed. If you are reopening a case, choose one of the three options that correspond with the motion or petition you are filing. Check the box that most closely matches the action you are filing. If you are reopening the case for further action, this section can be left blank. Check the box that correlates to your knowledge of related cases. This form should be used by an extended family member to obtain temporary custody of a child or children. Read through the entire form as it contains information about filing requirements with your petition. Begin by entering your name. A list of the full names, dates of birth, and current address of the minor child or children you are seeking custody of. In these sections, you will enter your relationship to the minor child and check the box for the reason you should be awarded custody. Enter the full names and addresses of the legal parents. State whether consent has been received from the legal parents and your reason for requesting custody. Fill in the remaining fields with your knowledge of any protection orders or child support orders and include any requests for child support. This form should be used by an extended family member to obtain concurrent custody of a child or children pursuant to Chapter 751, Florida Statutes. Concurrent custody means that an eligible extended family member is awarded custodial rights to care for a child or children concurrently with the children's parent or parents. Use this form in any case involving parental responsibility for, custody of, or time sharing or visitation with any minor child. This affidavit is required even if the parental responsibility for, custody of, or time sharing or visitation with the minor child is not in dispute. Begin by entering your full name and the number of children subject to this proceeding. Read through the form and fill in the information requested about the minor children. Include every location the child has lived in the last five years. Complete the remaining sections for each child related to your case. If there are any other proceedings regarding the custody, visitation, child support, or care of the minor child or children in this or any other state that you have knowledge of or have been a party to, check the appropriate box for your situation and enter the requested information if applicable. These forms are to be completed and signed by a parent who agrees to grant temporary custody of your minor child or children to an extended family member and agrees to waive service of process. Service of process occurs when a summons and a copy of the petition or other pleading that has been filed with the court are delivered by a law enforcement officer or a private process server. Enter the full name of the legal parent, the names of the minor children, and the name of the petitioner who is seeking temporary or concurrent custody. Read through the remaining sections before signing the waiver in the presence of a notary or deputy clerk. While all documents filed in a petition for temporary or concurrent custody must be served to the other party, certain documents are required by law to be served by personal service. Personal service means that a summons, this form, and a copy of the forms you are filing with the court that must be personally served and delivered by a deputy sheriff or private process server. Personal service is required for all petitions, including petitions for modification. You cannot serve these papers on the other party yourself, or by mail, or hand delivery. You will need to locate a private process server if your petition does not qualify to be served by the sheriff. The Pinellas County Sheriff has a list of approved process servers. See their website, pcsoweb.com, for more information. Review the instructions in your packet carefully, as it contains further information of serving the other party. Enter the information requested. Be sure that the addresses are correct, as an incorrect address may result in non-service of your petition and may cause you to incur additional costs and delay your case. The clerk will review your summons and sign it for issuance if all requirements are met. If your summons is being served by the Pinellas County Sheriff, the clerk will forward your summons and any documents to the sheriff for service. If you are serving the other party through a private process server, the summons will be returned to you and you must make arrangements with the process server. 
You should use this form to give the Sheriff's Department or Private Process Server instructions for serving the other party in your case, with the summons and other papers to be served. Begin by entering the information of who will be serving the summons. Enter the information of the party to be served. Under Special Instructions, you can include such as the best times to find a person at a specific location that will assist with having your summons served. A non-military affidavit is filed when the court must know the military status of a defendant. Active service members are granted certain protections under the Service Members Civil Relief Act. Read through the form and check the box that correlates to your knowledge of the other party's military status. If you have any supporting documentation, be sure to file it with your affidavit. This form may be used to obtain constructive service, which is also called service by publication, only if you do not know where the parent lives and you are unable to obtain personal service or substitute service of process. You must also file an affidavit of diligent search and inquiry along with your notice of action. However, please note that if you use constructive service, the court may grant only limited relief because its jurisdiction is limited. The order granting temporary custody of the minor child to the petitioner, respondent, may not include an order for the support of the minor child unless the parent has received personal or substitute service of process via a summons, the petition requests an order of support of the child, and there is evidence of the parent's ability to pay the support ordered. This is a complicated area of the law, and you may wish to consult an attorney before using constructive service. Enter the names of the legal parents and their last known address. The last known address must match the address listed on the affidavit of diligent search that is filed with the notice of action. Enter your name and address so any response to the petition can be served to you, as well as the date they must serve their response. Any response to your petition must also be filed with the clerk's office. The Pinellas County Clerk of Court is located at 315 Court Street, Room 170, Clearwater, Florida, 33756. The clerk will then issue the Notice of Action after review. If for any reason the Notice of Action is not issued, you will receive correspondence in the mail. A Notice of Action is published in a qualified local newspaper or is posted by the clerk's office for four consecutive weeks. Please contact the clerk for a list of qualified publishers. The other party is entitled to actual notice of the proceedings when possible. When it is necessary to use constructive notice, it must be given in a way that is likely to provide actual notice. You must disclose the last known address of the other party. This form includes a checklist of places you can look for information on the location of the other party. While you do not have to look in all of these places, the court must believe that you have made a serious effort to get information about the other party's location and that you have followed up on any information you received. Begin by filling out the affidavit by entering your name after filling in the case information. Use these boxes to select the actions you took to locate the current address of the respondent. Be sure to provide details of your search, using a separate sheet if necessary. Enter the age of the respondent, or check the box for unknown. If this section is left blank, it will result in a delay in issuance by the clerk. In these sections, you will enter your knowledge of any current or last known address for the respondent. If you list a last known address of the respondent, you will need to provide the clerk a self-addressed stamped envelope with the last known address and a copy of the petition to the clerk for mailing when your notice of action is issued. If the other party has failed to respond within 20 days of the date of service, you may need to file a motion for default. Generally, a default allows you to obtain an earlier final hearing to finish your case. Once the default is signed by the clerk, you can request a trial or final hearing in your case. Fill in the case information. The clerk will review your motion upon filing and enter a default against the other party if all requirements are met. Anytime you have a set hearing before a judge, you must send notice of the hearing to the other party. If your hearing is in front of a general magistrate or a child support hearing officer, you must use the appropriate notice of hearing. Both forms can be found on the following websites, mypanelisclerk.org, flcourts.org, or jud6.org. To set a hearing date and time, you will usually have to make a good faith effort to coordinate a mutually convenient date and time for you, the other parties in the case, and the judge, except in certain emergency situations. Before you complete this form, you should contact the family law staff or judicial assistant for information regarding the proper procedure to follow. Enter the other party's name. Enter the hearing information provided to you, including date, time, and courthouse location. Include all issues to be heard. Read through the information at the bottom of the motion and order, which provides information should you need an accommodation to attend the non-jury trial. This should be done at least seven days before your scheduled court appearance. Generally, the court will have trials or final hearings in contested cases. 
This form is to be used to notify the court that your case is ready to be set for trial. Before setting your case for trial, certain requirements must be met. Contact the family law staff or judicial assistant to determine how the judge assigned to your case sets trials. Along with indicating that your case is ready for trial, write in the estimated time you think both parties need to present their cases. You should ask the family law staff if you need to bring one of these forms with you to the hearing or trial. If so, you should type or print the heading, including the circuit, county, case number, division, and the party's names, and leave the rest blank for the judge to complete at your hearing or trial. This form is filed by the petitioner or respondent for the use of the clerk of the court for the purpose of reporting judicial workload data under Section 25.075 Florida Statutes. When your case is completed, the petitioner or respondent must complete this form and file it with the clerk. Check the appropriate box if your case is dismissed before or after a hearing or trial takes place. Additionally, check the box indicating if you or the other party agreed to a settlement, either privately or through the use of mediation. A disposition or judgment was received because one of the parties was defaulted. A judgment or final order was received and no party was defaulted. If your case went to trial and you received a judgment or final order as a result. If you have any questions about filing your case with the Pinellas County Clerk's Office, please contact us at 727-464-7000 or make an appointment to speak with an attorney at any of our three self-help centers.